Hi Internet, Handyman Cabin here, welcome back. Today we're going to start our mini-series on lathes and lathe work. A lot of people say that a lathe is a bit of a luxury in a small shop, but to me it's always been one of my most useful tools. They're also a lot of fun. Now, you can buy a pretty good store-bought lathe for a couple hundred dollars these days, but the proud way is to design and build your own. The one I'm going to show you how to build is about the size of a mini lathe, or um, those little foot-powered lathes that were everywhere at the turn of the last century. So, unless you do a lot of table legs and baseball bats, it'll do most of the work in a small shop. Let's get started. The first assembly you need to build is the headstock. I glued mine up from some nice seasoned pieces of fur I cut out of an old house. Whatever wood you use should be straight grained, and you should let it sit in the shop for several weeks to acclimate, because you don't want it warping on you after you go to the trouble to align it. I'll put measured drawings of all the pieces on my blog at handymankevinvideos.blogspot.com. Use hand planes to get the faces of the headstock absolutely square. You need to get the holes as square to the inside face of the headstock as possible. If you don't have a drill press, at least use some sort of drill guide. Try to bore them just slightly undersized so you can ream and scrape them later. The main headstock bearings are made from a bicycle bottom bracket. I cut this one out of an old bike, but you could buy one online. You should probably overhaul the bearings now while you have it out on the workbench. I made this improvised jig to check the squareness of the big hole using my table saw, an old bicycle crank, and my combo square. A dial indicator on a magnetic base would have been even better, but I don't own one yet. Make a mark on the crank and rotate it to make sure it is the same height above the table at every point. If not, adjust the hole with round files and or a machinist scraper. Masking tape on the saw table is a handy place to write down measurements. When you're satisfied with the holes, pull the bottom bracket and use a router to round over the corners. This will keep them from splintering later. The bracket that holds the other ends of the pipeways is built using the same techniques as the headstock. You can cut the whole piece out of a straight grain piece of 2x4. For ways, I use 3 quarter inch steel water pipe. Even brand new pipe is often a little bent, but I was able to find some sections that were pretty straight. Too bad I don't have a lathe yet to turn them perfectly true. I cut out three sections and rolled them on my flat workbench, listening for clicks that meant they were bent. I kept the best two of the three. I didn't have a drill bit which was exactly the same size as the pipe, and I wanted it to fit tight in the holes. I solved the problem by building a fixture for my angle grinder to cut the shoulder on the ends of the pipe. This is another step that would have been faster on a lathe. That jig is a project in and of itself, and I described it in a different video. The ways should fit tightly enough in their holes that you need to coax them in with a mallet. Get everything as square as you possibly can. Next, cut a piece of particle board for the base. Drill and countersink holes in it. Then glue and screw the assembly together. I also added a quarter inch lag bolt to line up with one of the holes in the headstock bearing shell to hold it in. A three jaw chuck is one of the handiest accessories you can have on your lathe. The one I managed to scrounge was made to fit on a plain 5 8 inch shaft, so I had to make an adapter to put it on the 10 millimeter threads of the bicycle spindle. I didn't have a piece of steel the right size, so I cast a piece of pot metal. Pot metal is easy to work with because it melts on an ordinary propane camp stove. I used a tin can full of slightly moist sandy dirt for my mold and rammed a cavity with a piece of broomstick. Then I slowly poured in molten metal and let it cool. After allowing plenty of time for cooling, I came back and shook out the rough casting. Then I clamped it in my drill press vise with some homemade V-blocks. I used my belt sander to roughly square the end. Next, using a homemade disc sanding attachment from my drill press, 
I squared and smoothed the end. Then I marked the approximate center with my dividers and center punched it. Next, I drilled the appropriate size hole for my tap. It's more accurate, and easier on the drill press, to drill multiple steps starting with a fairly small bit. You could tap this freehand, but putting the center in a drill press makes a pretty good tapping guide. Unplug the drill press for safety. A bungee cord on the spindle feed crank provides even pressure to hold the center against the back of the tap. If you don't have a center for your drill press, you can make one out of a piece of bolt using a file and a wooden guide block. Now it was time to turn the casting so it would be the right diameter and perfectly round. Since there isn't a drive belt on the lathe, I had to find another power source. I used my big half inch drill, connecting it with a piece of hose. Make sure the drill is clamped down tight to the table or it will walk on you. A small C-clamp on the trigger helps set and hold a constant speed. I turned the first of these castings with a jury-rigged spindle grinder. It worked okay, but later I realized it would have been much faster just to use a temporary tool arrest and turn it on the lathe. That's what I did for the second adapter which holds the pulley to the other end of the spindle. The adapter to put the pulley on the other end of the spindle looks a lot like the chuck adapter, except you need to cut it keyway. If you had one, you could use a milling machine or a metal shaper, but I just cut it with a wood chisel. Pot metal really isn't that much harder than some hardwoods. Once I screwed everything together and rigged a motor mount, I had a working lathe as long as I stuck to turning in the chuck. This means the next steps will go a lot faster. I'll show you how to do those in about a week. See you then.